This is a reading from the Notebooks by Maria Valtorta, 1943, December the 24th. The reference is Psalm 36, verse 21. Jesus says, Even a single verse of a psalm possesses a light capable of illuminating a large boulevard. Here is the difference between the sinner and the just one. The former is a vampire who takes and destroys and never gives back. He destroys the works of his brothers and sisters and my merits. He draws nourishment from the communion of the saints. This is the way he feeds on it, not for his spirit, for which no spiritual food can be of benefit, because it is a dead spirit. He feeds on it for, his, for this life of his, since the saints pray for him and deflect God's punishments from his head, all of them except the final one. For God is just and gives according to what has been done. The blood which is salvation gives back his condemnation, for with his life of sin he mocks my sacrifice. He is a parasite in the mystical body, and he ends up becoming a dead man, a dead cell in this wonderful body. You know that in your bodies, dead cells are the site of atrocious diseases. So it is with these spiritual cells, which feed on the work of others without having their own generating activity. They are cases of gangrene. The just one, on the other hand, acting like a god, continually produces, to a lesser degree, like a god. He is a begetter of life. Grafted into Christ, his master, he lives life and makes it his own, multiplies it with his own living, which, no matter how humble, is not scorned by God, who does not spurn the works of his little ones, but accepts them with a smile and makes them his own, rich with an inexhaustible wealth, for he has not only his own activity at his disposal, but that immeasurable treasure treasure which is the work of Christ and the saints. He takes pity on all, and gives without avarice, nor does this giving impoverish him, for the more he gives, the more God transfuses himself into him, bringing along with himself the river of holiness, whose source and mouth he is, and whose waves are the numberless merits of the immolated word and his saints. The more holiness grows, the more compassion increases, for if holiness grows, God dwells increasingly in you, and the dwelling of God in you means to possess charity. O oh, blessed destiny, when at the end of his life the just one ascends to heaven, the works he has done will be there to precede him, carpeting his way with lights, and singing his praises, and will say to his humble, blessed amazement, I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was naked, and you clothed me, sick, and you cared for me, a pilgrim, and you welcomed me. What did you... What you did to your brothers and sisters you did to me, and especially when with your pain and your action you made a brother a saint, you added a light to my crown as eternal king. You shall thus reign with me eternally, O my blessed one. The same day, Jesus says, To those who, when reading these dictations in a human way, find that I repeat myself, I respond, I set my stubbornness in teaching against your stubbornness in error. God Good teachers do not get tired of repeating an explanation until they are sure all the pupils have understood the master's explanation. In a student body, not all have the same will or capacity to understand. Indeed, the pupils who join will to intelligence are the exceptions. They are the teacher's pearls, the ones that compensate him for the disappointments occasioned by all the others. I am the teacher, and I alone am the one who, in addition to being the teacher, am God, and have God's all-embracing vision. I know how few there are in my people who listen, comprehend, retain, and apply my word. How few are those who, for whom love is intellectual light and, lo and will. For it is these, caught by love, who comprehend and live out my doctrine, and for whom to give an explanation once suffices for them to make it a norm for their lives. The others, dulled by sin or slowed down by spiritual sloth, must be taught tire tirelessly by me always beginning again from the start, so that a minimum of light and doctrine can work its way into them, and germinate a little plant of life. This is the reason for my repeating a single knowledge in a thousand ways, and with this result, those who need it least, because they are already one with me, receive it with ever new longing, as if it were always a new word, and don't get tired of receiving it, since for them it is food and air, which like natural food and air, they always need until, until the stopover comes to an end, and they come to life, where the contemplation of God will be the compendium of all needs. It will be everything. On the other hand, those who have most need of it get tired of it more quickly and halt, either because that doctrine is a goad for them and a reproach, 
or because their spiritual imperfection dulls them, making them incapable of feeling their needs and the beauty of my word. But I do my, I do my duty as the master just the same. I clasped to, to my heart the faithful disciples for whom they, my caress is already a word, and taking consolation in them, I continue the hard task of speaking to the hostile, the indolent, the weak, and the distracted.